Hello, my name is Grégory Puot. I've been with Transvalor for almost nine years and for almost one year in the development team. Here I'm going to show you the simulation of electromagnetic stirring with Turcast. I'll start with a quick introduction. I will explain the context behind the development. Then I'll give you a brief explanation about what electromagnetic stirring is, how it works in the Thurcast environment. And finally, I'll show you a laboratory test case as well as an example of continuous casting with electromagnetic stirring. The implementation of electromagnetic stirring in Thurcast has been based on the work of Luca Marioni as well as the 10 years of expertise of Transvalor in electromagnetism simulation with the electromagnetic solver used in Forge to simulate induction heating and also more recently to simulate magnetic pulse forming processes. What I'm going to present here is mostly about continuous casting because that was the main application in Luca Marioni's thesis but it will also be available for other types of applications. The integration in the Thurcast solver of this feature was made possible thanks to industrial cooperation and it will soon be available in the next Thurcast major release. After explaining the context briefly, I'll explain what electromagnetic stirring is. Electromagnetic stirring makes it possible to put a conductive fluid into motion with an electromagnetic field without contact then. The idea is to use a variable magnetic field that's going to induce currents in the conductive fluid. The presence of these currents associated with the magnetic field will create forces, Lorentz forces, in the Navier-Stokes equation that models fluid flows. The Lorentz force is included in the force term in this equation. In passing thermal contribution from stirring, i.e. the joule effects produced by the current circulating in the fluid, are included in the source term in the heat equation. There are two types of stirrers. Rotational stirrers that create a rotating magnetic field that will induce torque in the section of the billet and therefore put the fluid in motion around the casting axis. There are also linear stirrers that will create magnetic fields that will flow along the stirrer and put fluid into motion within the slab. What are the benefits of stirring? Electromagnetic stirring helps improve surface quality and also helps have a more uniform shell thickness. With that, you can therefore increase the casting velocity and reduce risks of breakout or surface defects with electromagnetic stirring you can also reduce central porosity on this example from literature you can see that you can reduce central segregation and you can also have an equiaxed solidification structure within the billet you can see that on another example from literature without stirring at the top you've got a columnar structure coming from the center from the edge to the center whereas with stirring this columnar structure stops quickly and it's replaced with an equiaxed solidification structure. Why simulate EMS? Well, simply because it's not so easy to put in place. To determine what is the best position of the stirrer or stirrers in the machine or in the mold, or also how to optimize the stirring itself and the power supply to the stirrers, it's not easy. On this example from literature, you can see that regarding the width of the equiax structure shown on, shown on the curves you quickly reach a plateau and you can also see that for the porosity rate in a part some parameters like frequency have an optimum and outside of this optimum porosity increases. After this quick overview of what stirring is, electromagnetic stirring, 
I'm going to show how that works in a Thercast environment. The strategy that's used to simulate electromagnetic stirring is the same one as the one used in the Forge software to simulate induction heating with the use of two solvers that are going to communicate with file exchanges. The electromagnetic solver solves and computes electromagnetic fields, currents and Lorentz forces at a time scale which is that of the frequency of the electromagnetic field. So it's going to compute the Lorentz force and the heat source and transfer that to the Thurkast solver. The Thurkast solver is therefore going to add the heat source to the source term of the heat equation and the Lorentz force to the force term of the Navier-Stokes equation and computes parameters. It happens as usual then. And at some point, depending on coupling parameters that are input, the Thurkast solver will consider that it's time to update the Lorentz force and will then stop and provide the electromagnetic solver with the temperature field used by the electromagnetic solver to update the electromagnetic material properties and a velocity field that will have an impact on the EM field and the Lorentz force. On the calculations that I'm going to show you later on, we use one-way coupling. You do the electromagnetic computation and the information from the solver is then sent over to Thurkast, but Thurkast is not yet able to communicate with the EM solver. Two-way coupling is being implemented to be available at the release of the feature. In order to set up this type of process, once again, we're following the same strategy as what is used to simulate induction heating in Forge. You need to input two simulations, an EM simulation and a continuous casting simulation in this example. And these simulations are coupled, as you can see, with this type of specific linking with the two-way arrows showing that there will be back and forth between the two simulations. For the EM simulation, we're going to use the objects present in the third cast simulation that are sensitive to electromagnetic fields. So we consider what is useful for the EM field. So in this case, I've decided to use the mold and the metal. The continuous casting machine is not represented because I considered it was too far to have an influence on the field. And these objects are going to use specific material files that are specific to electromagnetism. In this simulation, you've also got the stirrer or those elements of the stirrer that have an impact on the field. In this case, the various inductors that make up the stirrer and the core that, that focuses the field. But you can also have metal elements that will have an influence on the field. The inductors are set up with information about the current. In this example, I input a current in terms of intensity, frequency and phase and also geometric information about the inductor. On the Thurkast side, the setup is identical to the traditional setup. The difference is that here you've got a tick box that shows that Thurkast is to retrieve EM information from the EM solver. When the new version is released, there will probably be a few more parameters for two-way coupling that is not yet implemented here. Now I'm going to show you the simulation of a laboratory case, which is pretty interesting because that way you can compare with experimental measures. This lab case is a validation case for us because it was also a validation case used in Luca Mariani uh, in his thesis. It's from the literature with the references here and so you have a plexiglass cylinder in which you have a eutectic melt of gallium, indium and tin that is used and th its property is that it's liquid at room temperature. You have a Doppler sensor plunged just a few millimeters under the free surface of the metal 
and around the plexiglass container you have an inductor that would put the flow into motion. The simulation uses the same geometry of course. We profile symmetry so that we only simulate a quarter of the geometry. It is considered to be adiabatic. There is no heat exchange with the outside and the thermal contribution of induction is not taken into account either. The Perspex cylinder is replaced by a null velocity boundary condition on the walls. There's also a null velocity condition on the free surface and the Doppler sensor that is a few millimeters under the free surface is not simulated either. Here you've got the results on this case. On the left you've got a visualization of the magnetic field from the EM solver. You can see the magnetic field going one way then the other for each period of electromagnetism and then I'm showing the average Lorentz force over a period. It's the average over an EM period used by Thurcast with the arrows to indicate the direction of force and color to indicate magnitude. You can see that you have strong magnitude on the wall on the inductor side and it decreases very quickly and you've got maximum magnitude at mid heights and that will lead to a flow that will take the fluid from the edge to the center and from the mid height and then the fluid will have to recirculate above and under that in order to be put into motion. Here I'm showing a comparison between the measured velocity curve along the axis by the Doppler sensor, the experimental curve in red, and the axis velocity coming from the simulation. You've got a good fit with the experiment, with small differences that can be easily explained by the assumptions that were made in the simulation, i.e. that this is one-way coupling, and so the fluid velocity cannot have an influence on the field, on the EM field. So this velocity uh, is often going to have a breaking effect on the flow. And so the blue curve will come closer to the red one if you have this two-way coupling. We also chose not to use the thermal component of inductive heating. So we're not using potential thermal expansion effects due to inductor heating and the free surface is not in motion. It stays flat, whereas it's put into motion by the inductor in reality, which can explain the choppier aspect of the curve directly under the Doppler sensor on the left half of the curve. So now that I've shown this laboratory case, I'm going to show you one example of continuous casting with electromagnetic stirring. I have started from the tutorial available in the third cast release that I've changed for this presentation. I've added a nozzle in order to have a different flow that is really characteristic with fluid that comes in, hits the walls of the mold and adding the stirrer will lead to rotational flow so I need to represent the full geometry. I no longer have the possibility of using symmetry on the casting. Since the stirrer is near the nozzle as I'll show later, I've chosen to stop computing when the metal reaches the first rolls that you can see here. The stirrer that I've used is represented here inspired by the actual working of a stirrer however the shape the dimensions and the supply parameters are fully arbitrary this stirrer is made up of six inductors grouped in pairs of two the first inductor is paired with number four number two paired with number five and number three with number six each pair is supplied with current that has a 120 degree phase shift with the neighboring pairs. The stirrer is in this location compared to the mold, so really at the same level as the nozzle. Here I'm showing 
a comparison between the continuous casting computation without stirring activated and with stirring activated. No stirring on the left, stirring on the right. On subsequent slides that I'm going to show, the stirring case is always on the right and the no stirring case is still is always on the left. Here I'm showing velocity on the cross section through the mold. What you can see in this case without and with stirring you've got high velocity at the exit of the nozzle without stirring the fluid coming out of the nozzle hits the side walls of the mold and the velocity quickly decreases when you go lower into the mold. With stirring, however, you've got a high velocity area that's much deeper, that goes much deeper into the metal and which is very high near the walls, near the stirrer. Here I'm showing the same result, but this time I'm zooming in close to the nozzle and I'm showing the vectors in volume and here you can clearly see the rotational component of the flow. You can see the, the fluid rotating around the casting axis, whereas without stirring, the fluid hits the walls and then decreases in velocity. Here I'm showing on the upper half of the mold, this is only the top half of the mold, I'm showing the liquid fraction on a central cross section. What you can see is that when stirring is activated, solidification starts much lower in the mold and above all you've got a variation of skin thickness that is much smoother, that's slower also than in the no stirring case where the skin quickly acquires a uh, thick skin. Here I'm showing transversal cross sections along the mold, along the casting. The nozzle is at the top. Here you can see the top half, the top part of the mold, and the exit of the mold is here at the bottom. You can see clearly that a solidified, full solidified skin appears much lower deeper when stirring is activated. However, you can see that solidification starts in the corners because here velocity is lower, the stirring velocity is lower because you've got dead spots. And so you've got a smoother variation in skin thickness. And you can clearly see that here without stirring you expect to have a skin that will appear on all sides more or less at the same time. Here what you can see is that it starts rather in the corners and gradually it's going to solidify along the flat surfaces. So to conclude, the electromagnetic stirring functionality will be available in the next Thurcast major release. What I've shown here for a continuous casting application, because this is the main topic of Luca Mariani's thesis, that's going to be available for other types of processes. It can be used in third cast for foundry casting or ingot casting. This feature is compatible with other third cast features like macro segregation, TTT, or self radiation. The cases presented here only use one-way coupling because two-way coupling is still under development. However, you can already see a major effect from stirring on metal flow and solidification and above all on all the possibilities that Turcast offers to simulate these types of processes. Thank you for your kind attention and uh, let's now move on to the Q&A session.